Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. As you can see, we're back again at the New York Stock Exchange and happy to be so. It's nice that we can work this in um, to our schedule on occasion. Today we have an interesting show. Is We're going to be talking about climate change. And is your board effectively overseeing climate change issues? And joining me to have this discussion, and by the way, this discussion, which we do not probably have enough on this show, so we're certainly happy to have Susan Angeli, who is the senior advisor with KPMG's Board Leadership Center. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. It's great to be here. So um, you've, uh, the center has published a paper entitled Boardroom Climate Competence, Getting Ahead of the Curve. And we're seeing, which is no surprise, we're seeing a push on climate change. A little bit of feet dragging, you know, along the way here, but it's probably going to be a little different going forward. Tell us why. Yeah, so just, you know, very, very quickly and very high level. One of the reasons is, frankly, because we're already seeing the effects. So some of the uh, extreme heat, the fires, the floods, which, you know, many of us have experienced uh, even personally, it's making it very real. And in conjunction with that, there was a study done by uh, something called the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel of, uh, on Climate Change, sponsored by the UN, where uh, scientists from 195 countries looked at all of the literature and the research that was out there, and they said, you know, a couple of things. You know, first of all, what we're experiencing is because of climate change. Uh, we are now have a planet Earth that is just over one degree Celsius warmer than it was in pre-industrial times. And number two, this is because of man-made activity. This does not occur in nature. And then they went on to say, so looking long term, a couple of things. Uh, the sort of level of where you can adapt as a human species is at that sort of one and a half degrees uh, Celsius above uh, pre-industrial times level, which is what the Paris Accords said. Where we are now is if every single country in the world did exactly what it said it was going to do, by the end of the century, we would be at 2.7 degrees. Uh, Celsius above that. And so it's, 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 it's very, very concerning. And that's assuming compliance. If there's not compliance, obviously, it, it could be a lot higher than that. So we're, we're seeing uh, that the new urgency is coming. And when we look at what does that mean for business, uh, you know, from a, some of the surveys that we've done, uh, we talked to CEOs in our CEO survey, 400 CEOs, and 73% said that they believe that long-term these issues are going to be detrimental to long-term growth uh, and, uh, and the value. Um, but yet, as you said, it's not quite there yet in the boardroom. We uh, questioned uh, 467 board directors, and these are people who had self-selected to listen into one of our webcasts, and only 51% of them said that it's really on the agenda uh, with respect to strategy in a fulsome way. So it's so a long way to go. Yeah. Well, I, and no surprise that millennials and Gen Zers are way more uh, sensitive to this issue, and that's what's going to certainly with all these stakeholder um, capitalism is going to keep pushing the envelope. It's, sure. it's, it's exactly talent and consumers, yeah. and, and they do care. So um, as boards exercise this oversight responsibility that they have, what are the key areas? And this is probably the meat of what we can pass along here. What are the key areas that uh, boards should be focused on? Yeah, so, so first, of course, is risk. Uh, and, and, and think about this in, in a couple of different buckets. So the physical risks we're, we're all focused on, but then there's also reputational risk. Uh, you know, we talk, you, talk, you mentioned the millennials uh, and uh, Gen Zs, and, and, and this is a big deal. So in terms of being able to attract and retain clients and also talent, uh, you know, regulatory risk, uh, the pressure is on for 
whether it's here or any other country in the world, enormous pressure to regulate. So what does that mean? And as we move toward a more decarbonized future, how is that going to change how companies operate in terms of the costs, in terms of the investment? Uh, so, so tremendous amount of risk. And then also the flip side of risk is a tremendous uh, amount of opportunity. Uh, you know, just as we saw in COVID, when companies are being called upon to pivot very, very quickly, there's winners and there's losers. And, and so the boards that are really getting ahead of it and looking, you know, not only in the short term, but also in the middle term and in the long term. And, and when I say long term, I'm, I'm talking very long term. You know, we're talking 10, 15 years, maybe even more. Um, those are the companies that are thinking, OK, what do we do now? that is going to help us adjust our strategy to a new reality. And, and so those are the kinds of issues that boards really need to be wrestling with. So um, how, when, when these issues come up, how are they impacting, do they have an impact on like who sits on the board, like board composition? Is it having an impact on agendas because we know how crowded agendas are to get something on the agenda. So how about in those two areas? Are, is, is this movement yeah. having impact in that? It, it, it certainly is, although uh, it's, it's having an impact, you know, sort of only now in those industries that are really, really in the crosshairs of it. But, but I believe going forward, it's going to have an impact on companies in every industry. And uh, there's sort of two terms of art that I've heard. One is climate competence. Another is client, uh, climate fluency. Uh, investors are, are asking directly. So Mr. or Mrs. the lead director, tell me how your board is climate fluent. And, and so those conversations are already happening. Uh, and what that leads to is boards really taking a step back and saying, you know, A, do I need a climate scientist on my board? You know, maybe, maybe not. For most companies, probably don't have to go that far. But then, how do you, uh, you know, reach that climate fluency? So, so are you looking to bring on someone who's got a background in sustainability, who really has been wrestling with these issues for decades? And then, for the entire board, uh, how is the board being educated on the topics? Are they bringing in experts? Are they, you know, going for some of the certifications that some of the universities are offering? Or you know, really just you know, going to programs and reading to, to really uh, think about how do I know enough so that when the discussion is not climate, I understand the climate risks and can bring them up in discussions about strategy and overall yeah. risk. Well, that's a great point. We do know that when boards tried to put on specialists without overall knowledge, that that hasn't worked great okay yeah. that yeah. Um, so here's a case where um, you would hope and again sometimes I think it's definitional but you would hope people would have the sustainability because when you think about it whether they call it sustainability or not they're going through the thought process right of how right. do I exactly. stay successful and how do I do this maybe not in the climate sense which needs to be promoted more but certainly in the general sense but I would, I would think that that's got to be one of the more challenging um, sort of educational pieces uh, that would mandate somebody coming in to do it. Because I think very few people outside of oil and gas, you know, and things mm -hmm. that are, are mining and things that are natural climate um, issues where boards will need help. Yeah, I, I, I think it's absolutely. And, and the parallels that I see are, you know, we've talked about cyber in the same context. We've talked about, um, you know, t digital technology as an enabler to strategy in the same context. You know, all of these and climate now have similar kinds of issues where they're highly specialized. You may not need someone who's highly specialized, but you definitely need to understand what the issues are and how to ask the right questions and assess the responses. And, and really that's, that's where boards are going yeah. more and more. But you and I both know your experience at, um, as a general counsel and, and uh, 
you know, you, you know how hard it is to get things on the agenda. Yes. So yes. Uh, directors that are aware of this, corporate secretaries and or uh, general counsel really are going to have to push to make sure that this not only for discussion purposes, but maybe for educational purposes, does get on agenda. Yeah, although it's, it's interesting because as I talk to boards, so more and more, they would love it to be on the agenda. They're kind of wrestling with how, because as you said, there's so many other things to do. Um, but I'm seeing a couple of things. One is driving it into the committees. Uh, it's very, very common. To, for NomGov to, to take, you know, generally NomGov will take on ESG uh, broadly. And so bringing climate into the NomGov committee has started to happen um, from a disclosure perspective. It started to happen in audit committees. And then from the compensation committee, which, you know, as, as we're now gravitating from narrow compensation to committees to more of a human capital committee, looking at, so what does this mean for talent and how are we going to drive the right incentives as the company transitions and, and is going to have to make some very heavy investments potentially depending on the industry. Um, and, and how do you incent that in a long term, which may frankly be longer than many of the management team will be in place. So, so those are some of the issues that are starting to be grappled with at the committee level. And then from the board level, it's a matter of, we're already talking about strategy and we're already talking about risk. How do we just add an additional lens? We have a technology lens now. How do we now add a lens of climate change? Yeah. So Susan, where can people get a copy of uh, the boardroom climate competence uh, staying ahead of the curve. Yeah, so the, so the easy answer to that is that it's right on our website, the KPMG Board Leadership Center website. Yeah. Well, listen, um, as I said in the beginning, we, I, I was really happy to have you because we have not spent enough time on this topic. So hopefully this is uh, a step in the right direction even for us. And I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yep. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that will help you be, be a better board member or committee manager. So we'll see you then.